What's up guys, Whiteout here. Today I have something a little bit different for you guys. I'm starting up an episode called the Split Screen Series. Um, I'm not, not sure if you guys have ever seen anything like this before. I have never seen anything like this before on YouTube, but here it is. And my first guest today is iPhenom. Introduce yourself, iPhenom. What's up guys, it's iPhenom, and uh, thank you Whiteout at HDX for uh, having me today. No problem, man. Um, what do we got here today for a uh, video? Well, today, um, you had invited me to a, a, a game, and I ended up on the other team, unfortunately. But um, we still managed to get some pretty entertaining uh, gameplay for you guys. Uh, this game, we both do fairly well. And uh, as you guys can see, we kind of go through a, a battle of uh, killing each other throughout the game, but um, we both realized that we did fairly well, especially for being on the other team, and uh, we thought we'd upload it, and we had it pretty well synced, um, and uh, Whiteout did a very good job of editing this, so I hope you guys enjoy this. <laughs> yeah, it was hard keeping up with you. Every time I turned the corner, <laughs> you got me in the back or something. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, uh... You know, what what stu kind of stuff do you do on your channel, Phenom? I mean, uh, what kind of videos could people expect from you if they uh, became subscribers? Well, one thing that I can always guarantee for you guys is a uh, commentary that you guys can hopefully relate to. I like trying to relate to my subscribers, even though I may not have that many. Um, I try to kind of bring my personal opinions towards things, and hopefully you guys can understand where I'm coming from. I try to bring a unique perspective on uh, ongoing topics that are pretty big in the Call of Duty community, and I try uh, doing them over some fairly good gameplays. You guys can go check them out and see for yourselves. But yeah, I, I take pride in my commentaries. I take pride in the way I play, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, guys, uh, I know from uh, experience that uh, I feed on here, he's very competitive, so whenever you watch one of his commentaries, there will always be some amazing gameplay behind it. So, uh, you know, if you do enjoy this commentary and you enjoy uh, listening to I feed on after this commentary is over, just check him out. I will have a link in the description to his channel. Check him out, subscribe. He's a pretty cool guy. Thank you. So, uh, Phenom, uh, what, what are your thoughts on Modern Warfare 3? Well, from what I can tell from some of the, uh, the gameplays that have been leaked so far, is that it basically looks like an upgraded version of Modern Warfare 2, and... Like, uh, like, uh, MW2... Yeah, pretty that. much. It's like <laughs> it has a lot of the older features from what it looks like. It has a lot of the older guns that we've all known to uh, been accustomed to and love a lot, like the ACR, the SCAR, M16, for example. Um, those guns have made a return, and um, they seem they appear to uh, have added some new features as far as the uh, attachments go, the perks go, and that's something that I was really looking forward to because Modern Warfare 2, in my personal opinion, was a very fun game, but there were just a few things that made the game pretty much unplayable at times, so I think that they finally patched those things, made the graphics even better, made everything just more enjoyable, so that's what I'm hoping for, but you know, sometimes these leaked gameplays, the looks can be deceiving, but I'm hoping that's not the case here. Yep, uh, yeah, actually same here, you know, I, I when I saw some of the gameplay, uh, I was actually watching the uh, live stream from uh, Call of Duty XP, the, uh, the uh, optic game, uh, where they were competing. I think it was for like four hundred thousand wow. dollars. Yeah, they were competing for four hundred thousand dollars, and I was watching some of that gameplay. And mainly, most of the guns actually looked like the same guns from Modern Warfare 2. I mean, they may have upgraded a few things, but uh, everything for the most part is the same. But I did realize they got rid of death streaks. Oh, they did. Look at that. Yeah, the death streaks are gone. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and isn't uh, second chance gone as well? Yep, second chance is no more. Uh, I' pretty sure it's uh, been confirmed. There's not going to be any more panic knifing either because I think they took care of that somehow with the button layout. I oh, mean, yeah. what you got to do to actually get the knife out. But I'm not 
positive on that part. Well, that would probably help uh, tactical players like myself that tend to try to drop shot a bit more. Um, for me, uh, it is very frustrating when I turn around a corner and the second I turn around that corner, I'm getting shanked pretty much instantaneously. So for me, that helps me out a lot more, but it's not something I can really complain about. You know, every person has their own play style. You know, I tend to try to drop shot, use the uh, tactical button layout well. Some people might use default, but um, I think panic knifing at times can be a bit um, a bit unnecessary, I guess. Yep, yep, same here. Um, I also noticed that they, uh, they added a new feature. Um, from what it looked like when, uh, when I was watching the uh, live gameplay, I saw uh, what it looked like to be able to, uh, you, you're able to actually throw stuns and grenades uh, while, while you're running. Oh, really? Yeah, w what do you think, uh, do you think that would, is a good idea or a bad idea? Um, I, well, I don't really see that being abused much. Um, as far as how realistic that is, that obviously is a bit more realistic, but I can I can count um, many times in the past where I've gotten caught throwing a stun, throwing a grenade, whatever, and I end up getting shot because you know there is that little bit of a delay when you're throwing the stun, and it takes you a little bit of time uh, to kind of regroup from that, and in that split second you might be able to uh, die from it. So hopefully um, this can help you play a little bit more tactically. I usually try not to throw stuns that much. Um, um, just because I don't like, you know, th that it seems like I get very unlucky when I uh, ride throw stuns. It's usually that that one time that I'm throwing the stun is usually when I get shot from behind or, or something like that. So hopefully that could help out a lot more. If they're making the game more realistic, I think that might uh, might add some some new features that I think could be pretty fun. True, true. Yeah, well. Um other than uh, Call of Duty, is there any uh, like uh, okay? Is there any other games or uh, no different genres or anything that you're you're into that you may or may not upload to your channel later on? Uh, well, I am into uh, FIFA. Um, FIFA 11 was a kind of a frustrating game for me to play just because I do play soccer uh, for high school and I've been playing for many years now so playing a game like FIFA 11 that for me was very unrealistic is uh, kind of frustrating but I will be playing FIFA 12 and I will be bringing that to my channel. Um, the one problem that I have with sports games is that there is that factor of being extremely unrealistic at times. You know, when you play a sports game, you're expecting it to be like 100% realistic 100% of the time, but unfortunately that's not always the case. I feel like, you know, in first-person shooter games, you know, having it be a little bit more unrealistic doesn't always hurt you in the end, but um, as far as other first-person shooter games go, I'm, I'm, I actually want to try out Battlefield 3 because I've been hearing that that is going to be the game that almost, that may surpass Call of Duty, but... Yep, um, yep. I'm I'm hoping that's not the case because I'm always a Call of Duty player at heart, and although I haven't really tried that many other first-person shooter games, none of them really catch my eye. But you know, if, I, if there's a game that I find entertaining, you know, more entertaining, more higher quality than Call of Duty, I'm always willing to try it out. Sweet, sweet. Yeah, well, I, I also uh, pretty much uh, grew up playing, you know, the the COD the COD games, COD series. And, uh, I just, uh, about last year, I re just recently started playing, uh, some Battlefield. And, I mean, from what, the way I see it, Battlefield is a, is a, you know, it's really different. It's different than COD, uh, by far. I mean, COD's a lot faster, got a lot faster pace to it. And, uh, Battlefield, it, it runs a little more slow. So, I mean, sometimes it, it gets hard to adjust from game to game when you're uh, switching back and forth. Yeah, because didn't but, you say that like you had uh, you had some friends in your lobby in this game that were uh, Battlefield players, and you know for them it's kind of hard to adjust to like, Call of Duty sometimes. Yeah, exactly. They uh, they're actually having a, a hard, very very hard time adjusting. <laughs> I mean, a couple of them got maybe two or three kills and. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't very very good for them at all because we had just came off of battlefield and they did horrible and they, they 
granted, they warned me uh, from the start that they were gonna do horrible, but they they kick ass at uh, Battlefield. So I mean, people have their games. So sometimes COD yeah. just isn't it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just gotta experiment with those other first-person shooter games and find the one that I guess suits you the best. Because you know they're some of them are very, very different and require a different style of play. I mean, when you're used to playing one specific game, going to a game like Call of Duty could be like, <laughs> like a completely foreign game to you. It's completely different in some aspects of it. Very, very true. Yeah, there's, there's, there's actually been a lot of controversy going on. I mean, there's there's people that say that uh, Battlefield 3 is going to surpass Call of Duty 3 and it's just going to blow it out of the water. That Call of Duty 3 is going to be history. Call of Duty is going to be history in, in general because of Battlefield 3. I mean, I know they added a new feature to, to uh, Battlefield. You could never go fully prone in Battlefield before in the Battlefield series. Oh, really? Uh, you could only go, yeah, you could only go down to one knee. But I noticed uh, now that they added... Uh, um, you can go fully prone now, and uh, but you know I've been getting a lot of uh, different uh, conversations on uh, you know people saying that it's going to surpass COD, and I'm not I'm not sure about that, but well I guess for me, we'll yeah for me, uh, what I, I personally think that um, for Call of Duty's sake, Modern Warfare 3 needs to be a a great game, a great overall game, because, um, you know, you can't have these games like, well, Modern Warfare 2, there was so much, like, hacking involved, and it happened so quickly into the game, um, there was the one-man army new tube pro, I mean, as far as the, the game itself, like I said, there were some parts of it that made it really fun, if you just take away some of the, uh, some of the features of it, it was a great game, but then you go into Black Ops, which is, kind of a completely different animal in itself, you know. Yeah. Um, there's some things in Black Ops that are just absolutely terrible. The hit detection is just god-awful. And uh, to be quite honest, you can't... Call of Duty cannot... It cannot afford to produce another mediocre game because if it does, then, yeah, Battlefield 3 and some of these other first-person shooter games will definitely surpass uh, Call of Duty um, altogether because, I mean, Call of Duty has such a wide fan base, but, I mean, when you're disappointing your your viewers like that, I mean, or your players and all that, you can't, you can't afford to be uh, producing games like this. I mean... The game is supposed to hold strong for, you know, nine, ten months up to a year. And, you know, when people are getting tired of it within the first two or three months, you know, that's not, that's not the best thing for your, uh, for your game. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, the video is now over. <laughs> and, uh, I guess I hope you guys enjoyed this, uh, the first disbursement of our, uh, split screen series. And I, I am hoping uh, iPhenom will return in, in the future for another uh, another uh, episode. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Thank you for having me. Yep. And uh, guys, remember, uh, check the uh, description. iPhenom's channel will be in the description. And if you uh, like this video, uh, please uh, rate, subscribe, and uh, let me know what you think. All right, guys. Peace.